Hi guys, my name is Lily and today I'm here at my survival shelter. As you can see, it's pretty much non-existent. And last time I was here, I have actually built this air tunnel. It's a ground heating system. And last time I have used uh, some bark for covering the air tunnel. But actually bark is not so great because if you step on it, it might collapse. So today I have brought some stones with me, which also are going to store the heat of the hot air much longer. And yeah, today I want to renew this air tunnel and then maybe start building the survival shelter up again. Yeah, usually there's no water in, in the earth, like the ground water is much deeper, but it has rained yesterday and that is why there's so much water in there. I just tried to make the tunnel a little bit deeper so that it can draw a little bit more air. I have this root here, which is in the way, but I don't want to cut it because it's not necessary. It might get a little bit hot through the hot air, but I don't think it will burn. Let's see, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I want to have a little bit of this overhang here so that the fire can go at the inside. And then the stone is going to get very hot, of course. It might break, but yeah, maybe it holds, let's see. Okay, here at the end, I'm missing one stone. I didn't have enough of stones. Uh, that's no trouble really because I can bring in another stone next time. And the most important part is here, because th this is already behind the shelter. So here I have the stones. This is where I'm lying. And this is where the most of the heat should be stored. And here it's already at the backside of the shelter. So no problem. And yeah, actually these stones you don't get here, so I have to bring them in. We don't have uh, very flat stones here in this area. So it's cheating, I know, but I want to, this to be a very good shelter. And if you don't have the stones like in a real survival situation, you can take bark like I did before, or you can take sticks and lay them side by side over the tunnel and then cover it with the soil. And now I'm going to cover the stones. As you can see, they are pretty sturdy. You can step on it, no problem. And I want to cover these stones now with uh, loam. I try not to take this topsoil here because it's not really airtight. So I'm going to push that away. I just want to take the brown loam here. Okay, next I have to take care of the fire pit here. And yeah, unfortunately it's full with water, but there's really nothing that you can do about it here with this ground, with the soil, because the loamy earth is very dense and it's going to catch the water. It's like a small pond and it can't drain through the bottom of the fire pit. So, yeah, when digging out a fire pit, that's the risk that you are going to take. Yeah, so that should be enough. Now let's collect some stones. Oh, 
Okay, here are some stones which I can use for the fire pit. And actually this has been an old forest road. And these stones here, I don't think they are natural either, but still I'm going to use them. Good big stones. This jacket will get dirty, but it doesn't matter because I can wash it when I come home. But I really need this as a container for the stones. I have some stones in the fire pit now and now I can lay some wood above it and then it will burn and it won't come into contact with the water. However, the coals are going to fall into the water. Uh, of course, this is not the perfect solution. I would rather have, you know, a dry fire pit, but today there's nothing else that I can do against it. I need some firewood because I want to try out if my underground heating system is working and I just found this dead spruce tree here which is standing and it should be dry enough to make some good firewood. Today I'm going to use my trusty Boreal 21. You can find a link in the description below if you're interested in it. A lot of people say that they don't like cutting with bow saws because they tend to jump, especially at the first initial cut. And uh, yeah, the first thing that I want to say about this is that first of all, you don't want to have your hand right here where you cut. You want to go away with your hand from the saw a little bit. And the next thing that I want to mention is that it only jumps when you push down a lot at the beginning like really hard so at the beginning you shouldn't really push too hard just let the saw do its work by its own so as you can see my saw doesn't jump anymore that's because i've cut like hundreds of logs for my shelters and sooner or later you will get a feel for the saw and then it won't jump anymore but still it's always great to put away your hand. And when I was a beginner, I often hurt myself because I wasn't aware of these small things, you know. These are small safety tips, but they are worth gold because the number one rule out in the wilderness is that you do not injure yourself. I don't want to make a big fire today, I just want to try out if the tunnel is drawing the hot air or not. So I'm just going to make a base layer with this logs here and I'm just going to burn the fin twigs today.
No, it's working. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to say is that you have to make sure that you have a very airtight earth because otherwise, yeah, you will get smoke uh, inside of the shelter. So make sure that you step on the earth and close all of the gaps. Sometimes my fans complain that I'm not wearing gloves and actually they are right. I should be wearing gloves more often because otherwise your hand will look like this here. So I have scratches all the time and yeah, it's pretty wise to protect your hands actually. And today everything is wet and full with dirt. So gloves are a good thing to have. I want to be careful with this bark because I don't want to destroy it like this one here. So in the night it was freezing. All of the spark here is frozen. It's very solid. That's looking great. Pretty stable here. That's where my upper body is going to be. I just decided that I want to take some logs for the back end of the air tunnel. I wanted to bring in one more stone, but I couldn't find one. So this is the emergency solution for that. And it's actually not too bad. Okay, so I have cut some logs and put them onto the air tunnel. And last time or Second last time I have brought this bamboo board in the forest and now I'm just going to use this as the back end covering of the air tunnel. And this hole here I want to keep free. And yeah, this is pretty stable. I can step on it, no problem. So this is going to do and now I'm going to need some earth to cover it. I'm about 50 meters away from my camp now and there's this huge tree which has fallen over and underneath here you can see that there's very good earth and this is what I need for my shelter. It's very fine soil, exactly what I need. And it's already saturated. Oh, this is so heavy. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. I'm telling you, this is some really good loam here and I'm pretty sure that I can make primitive pottery with this earth. It's great. It's really awesome. <laughs> and this is airtight, completely airtight. So I don't have to worry about the smoke coming into my shelter. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's really great. I think I'm going to get more earth and cover the rest of the top of the air tunnel because I want to make sure that it's really airtight and that there's no smoke coming through. This is a real mess here. I've never been so dirty at my hands in my life before. It actually looks like cement and I'm sure it's pretty airtight. But still I want to make a fire and see if I have any gaps. Because if I have I can close it now and later when the bed is standing I won't be able to close it easily again. As a fire starter today I have a tampon. Pretty good tinder because it's sealed water tightly in the package and you can just fluff it up like this and then you have your pure cotton.
Okay, guys. I don't know if you can see this at the back end, but the smoke is coming out of there already. The warm air is coming out of here. Okay, so the fire is burning pretty good and I haven't detected any gaps at the top of the air tunnel yet. So now I'm going to take some leaves and cover this area because it's quite muddy and when it's raining I don't want it, you know, I don't want everything to get muddy inside of the shelter. So I'm going to cover it with leaves. Today I have this awesome stainless steel canteen with me and I found it very cheaply on Amazon. It cost me like 24 euros here in Europe and I've seen it on Amazon US for 18 US dollars and there's a cup that comes with it. So you can't beat that price and it's really good quality, bomb proof steel, nothing bad about it. I wish that I had this like 20 years ago. I'm not sponsored or anything by the guys who produced this uh, canteen here, but I'm going to put an Amazon link into the description of this video if you want to get one. And yeah, there's really nothing bad about it and you can't beat the price, so it's, it's awesome. I don't want to attract too much attention with the smoke. And yeah, now I want to keep building Okay, folks, so it has been pretty warm in Austria the last weeks, but uh, the weather forecast says that we will get colder weather in the next time and a lot of snow. So first of all, today I want to finish the roof and then maybe next time I am going to build the bed. I have these small twigs here, which I'm going to use. I just put them on the shelter loosely like this and they are going to hold the bark it's just a framework Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the best bark available anymore. So I probably have to get more bark from somewhere else. When it comes to roof building, it's important that you overlap the bark so that when the water falls onto the shelter, it will run off and off and off and not into the shelter. And gaps are not that great. So here I have a gap. And yeah, maybe I can fix that with a smaller piece of bark, like this. And this should be good to go. Okay, so I'm running out of good bark and I've just taken a walk and tried to scavenge more good bark from the trees but there are not a lot of dead trees around here. So I really need to go searching a little bit more. All right, so this is how far I got. And as you can see, I have only covered two thirds of the shelter because now I ran out of bark. And yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. 
and now I have walked around the camp for one hour but I couldn't find another tree which was dead and standing and where I could peel off the bark so now it's getting dark and I have to leave and next time I'm either going to search again or bring in some bark from another place because I really want this to be a good roof and bark is the best natural material in this area here that I can use. So for today this is going to be it. I want to thank you for watching and so far it doesn't look too bad, right? So if you like this video make sure that you leave me a thumbs up and maybe a comment and also if you want to see more videos like this make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.